call this meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up, department head updates. I'll go first. <laughs> um, for August of this year, we did uh, 61 911 calls, 139 transfers. Um, year to date is 544 um, total. I'm sorry, 544 911 calls, 989 transfers. Last August, we were at 84 911 calls and 137 transfers um, for the total of last year was 501 at this time compared to 900, uh, 501 911 calls, 970 transfers. So we're, we're about even with last year. We really haven't uh, swayed from that much. As far as the uh, mileages for the trucks, um, we put on 15,000 miles last month. I can break it down by truck if you'd like. Um, <coughs> A3, which is our 911 truck, we went 561 miles with that last month. Um, A7, which is our oldest truck, oldest van, uh, we put 5,137 miles on it. Um, A8, which is a transit van, we put 5,114 miles on that one. And our other box truck, we put zero miles on that. Um, and A4, uh, which is a, one of the newer vans, we put 4,100 miles on that. Fire trucks were serviced today. Uh, we had a few leaky valves, those were repaired. So we're back to 100% on that. The uh, Tanker is going in the body shop down to uh, Ford at the end of the month. And they're going to try to do work on that during the day, bring it back so it's not at night, so it's not out of service. Um, which it, they seem to think that that'll work, so we'll see. Um, Fire Parade is the 11th of October, and just thank you, Jessica, for putting out a uh, press release on that. And that's all I have. Okay. Why does A4 have no miles this past month? A5 oh. is, it's a... Uh, A5, excuse me. Yeah, it's a box truck that sits in the middle. It's the, the one that's, it has some issues that is not worth putting any money into. Um, so we're, we're using that just for local stuff. But it's also parked in the middle and a real pain in the butt to get out. So it hasn't been easy for anybody to pull it out. Okay. Um, but that, when that is that truck is due to come in uh, January. So basically, so, what it is, it's kind of a standby. So if everything's yeah, out. It's a spare. You can take it out and yep. use it locally if needed. It has some issues. It's, it mm. vibrates a lot at over 40 miles an hour because most of our stuff is interstate. And its replacement is coming in January? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Which once that gets here, that should, I hope, relieve some of the pressure on the van as well. But that'll, that'll, that box truck will probably be a one-shot deal. I don't think we'll need another one. That, when that wears out, we'll probably replace it with a van. Okay. Thank you. And 
John. So since the last meeting, <coughs> calls for service, uh, we've had 566. Uh, last year at the same time frame was 414. Uh, this year to date, calls for service were at 4,837. Last year, year to date from January to today's date was 3,668. So again, that's, those are rising. Um, traffic stops since the last meeting was 215. Uh, last year at the same time frame was 105. Year to date this year is 1,962. And last year, the year to date, uh, 1,251. Arrests, we've had 13 since the last meeting. Uh, same time last year was seven. Uh, this year, date total, we're at 122. And last year, year to date, we were at 100. So that, those are all rising. Uh, motor vehicle collisions, last since last meeting, 10. Last time, this time frame last year was 12. Uh, year to date, we've covered 64 motor vehicle collisions, and last year, year to date, was 56 motor vehicle collisions. Um, so we did receive, moving on to other stuff, some complaints from citizens about the sidewalks from Middle and Canal to Bunker Hill and Park Street people, the kids and stuff, bikes, scooters, those sort of things on that sidewalk there. And it is posted not to do that for the safety of the people on the bikes, scooters, whatever, and obviously the pedestrians come at this. So I have talked to the officers and reminded them that that, that is posted. So we will be talking to people as we see that to make sure that that's being enforced. Um, later this month, September 25th and 26th, uh, scheduled Lieutenant Matthews to go to a two-day canine conference down in Hillsboro. Uh, talked about stuff, uh, covers use of force, search and seizure, narcotic contraband. They discuss Supreme Court cases, Court of Appeals cases, New Hampshire law. Everything in preparation for him to be taking that canine when that canine uh, comes to us next year. It's just helping better prepare him for that. Uh, today and tomorrow, Officer Walker is in a ride class, which is an advanced roadside impaired driving enforcement class. Basically, he's just an advanced DWI detection type class, something that he was interested in doing, and it's good to have somebody on the department that has that advanced training to help combat DUI cases. So um, tomorrow, I'm sure everybody's aware, the Career Expo up at the fairgrounds, we will be there. Um, we'll have a table set up with our cruiser to talk to the kids as they come around. And the um, last thing I have to talk about was, since I took over as chief last year, I've had a handful of citizens asking about speed and various roads in town. And um, one of the things I've been trying to do is get a grant for a speed trailer, um, like a mobile speed trailer. Whitefield has one, it you know, flashes the speed at you, but also you can do messages and stuff like that. Um, I talked to Robin a while back about that, and I, like I said, I've had numerous citizens question me about trying to do something like that. Well, uh, Office of Highway Safety has a grant um, for, to purchase one of those, and we were awarded 21000 change to purchase um, a speed trailer for the town. It's, there's no match to it, it's full grant, so it doesn't cost the town a dime. So at some point, we'll be getting a speed trailer as well. So I think that's a good thing for us. That trailer can be used uh, by any department in town. Because like I said, it does have a message capability. So if there's major events like the, uh, dig, the big dig in front of you know, Dunkin' Donuts, we can put that out to help notify pedestrians and, and motor and traffic that there's an event up ahead. So it's got many uses that the, all departments will be able to we were able to get that grant. So that's all I have. It appears in ways, I don't I don't know if it's factual, but we have an increase in officers' interest in education, further education here lately, or well, I mean, or is it I, I as the chief I believe and, and this goes back to my military days that you, you can never have enough training in college. So as as the chief I firmly believe the officers are only as good as what well. the tools we get them. So if there's something that they're interested in that they want to do to better themselves, 
and at the same time better the department and the town as a whole, I'm going to do what I can to get them into those trainings and, and make that happen. I applaud that effort, actually, because the better trained they are, the better off the town is. Absolutely, 100%. So, so when I look at it, I'm only as good as the officers below me. You know, and the better I make them, the better the town is as a whole. And then, hang on, with department heads, I'm going to go to the library first, and then we'll come to you, Peter. Can I ask you a question about police enforcement? Real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm all for, you know, speed signs and all that, but um, I really think enforcement is lax. Um, I remember Gorham used to have a sign when you entered the road, speed limit strictly enforced. I tell you what, you want to live on Route 93 North, just stay in my driveway for eh, an hour, any time of day. I don't care, three in the morning, seven in the morning, noon time, it's like 93 North. And it's like 50 isn't the speed limit, 60 isn't the speed limit, 70 is the speed limit. And I see it on Main Street as well. There's just, there's just no concern for the speed limit. Um, and it's not not all Flatlanders. There's a lot of locals that are just mudfoots. Uh, and I, I would just like to see more people getting pinched for uh, speeding. May I respond? Yep. I don't think lax is the right answer. In, in just the last three weeks since our last meeting, we've had 215 traffic stops. Again, um, year to date, 1,962 traffic stops. We are stopping cars at a higher rate than at, that I've ever had in over six years that I've been in this town. Um, so we're out there doing it. It's definitely not lax. So people just don't want to obey the law. We're going to continue to stop them. Um, I actually have, I had a family complain to me a couple weeks ago that everybody in my family has been stopped. My answer was simply, tell them to slow down. We're going to stop. So we're out there doing it. I'm sorry if it's not enough, but we're doing the best we can with what we have. So. Yep. Okay. And Barbara? Uh, not much. The soffit repair at the library has been completed. It came in at the figure that we had asked for from Capital Reserve, even though it was far more extensive than anybody realized. Once the guys got up there, there was a lot of stuff that needed replacement, but that is done. We're still hoping that the upgrade to the LEDs in the upper part of the library will be done by the end of the year. We've been told it will, but we'll wait and see. Um, other than that, the trustees are working on budget. At this point, without the health insurance figures, we're coming in, in pretty close level funding. But we'll have to see what health insurance comes in. Really all okay, thank you. And no other department heads here tonight. So Jessica, we'll move on to appointments. What's up? I was there was a I was wondering if Jessica had a report from Eli. He's normally part of this week's. This week? Yeah, I was going to roll some of his stuff into mine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So okay. appointments. First up is Lucy Wyman. I do not see her here. Yep, the department heads can leave if they so desire. Uh, seeing that, we'll move Thanks, beyond Jeff. and we will have Conservation Commission Chair Sam Main in regards to the ARM fund. Yeah, um, so I guess uh, at the previous Commission meeting, we had voted to uh, turn down the arm fund um, and just communicating with Robin um, that had come before you and you had some concerns with it. So, um, I had a chance to talk directly about it. I might just recap what I see as the situation um, and then yeah, we can discuss if more clarification is needed. Um, so, Basically, so we applied last fall for the ARM fund, um, and were, we did get a um, offer letter that had some
some contingencies in it um, that we basically were going to have to figure out before we got a, a grant agreement um, to sign. Um, that offer letter uh, had some of the contingencies in there um, that were not covered in the kind of in our application or historic review, um, permit, legal protection, um, and performance monitoring, and I guess wetland delineation as well. Um, so those were added expenses that we didn't see coming until until getting that offer letter. Um, we kind of, when when we were given the offer, DES said, you know, we'll we like this project and we're going to help find some funding to to make that work. Um, so since kind of really from like January until July, I've had a number of meetings with DES and the Army Corps, who are the kind of the two organizations that administer the funds, um, to figure out if we can come to an agreement on um, you know what the the scope of work would look like and, and how it's all going to get funded. Um, in kind of the in the process of that, I also had put in a couple other grant applications to cover. We even when we applied, we knew that the, the arm fund wasn't going to cover the entire cost of the project, and our hope was to bring in a couple different grants. Um, we had some success, uh, but not quite as much as we wanted. Um, so. Um, Really, what what it comes down to is based on the kind of our budget estimates. Um, the the arm arm grant is 137 thousand roughly, um, and the kind of those those unexpected costs that were requirements of the grant um, ended up coming out to about 130 thousand. Um, so these are these are requirements of the grant that weren't really our initial. Uh, Objective. Um, that's seventy thousand for historic review. Um, about twenty thousand for legal costs for protection. Um, about thirty thousand for land survey, uh, and ten ten thousand or so for performance monitoring. So really, what I think um, is we've come to the point at which. You know, the, the grant is only covering the requirements that it brings along with it. Um, and some of those, like the permanent legal protection, were not, were things we kind of had to, you know, the school begrudgingly <laughs> agreed to. Um, and on top of all of that, just the experience so far with working with DES and Army Corps, um, it has been, it's been pretty burdensome just in terms of communication. Um, the, I don't know, the communication is not really clear, um, and, and I have on a few occasions gotten kind of surprises on, on requirements. So um, with all of that in mind, um, you know, I, I would say we should cut bait essentially um, and not accept the funds because they're not going to cover actually any of the project that we initially wanted to do. They're just going to cover the requirements that the accepting it brings. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that's kind of what I see as a situation. I, I, I'd love to hear your concerns directly instead of kind of secondhand. Yep. Well, the first concern is if we turn it back, they're not likely to give it to us again. But having this process, this, and I guess a, a learning lesson for you is you have to know all the requirements for it because there's so often we find, oh, there's this great grant, sounds great, but then when you get the requirements, the federal government wants this, they want that, and they're not covering the cost of their requirements. And I'm not faulting you, it's, it's a process you gotta learn. And it sounds like this is one of those processes that, yeah, they think it's great, we're gonna provide this to you. And then they put so many requirements on it, you can't even do the original project. And we've found that 
in other areas in town when trying to apply for grants that it's just not worth taking the grant. And that's unfortunate. Um, and I'm sorry to find it out the hard way. <laughs> but Yeah, you know, I, I had heard rumors that the Arm Grant was a really burdensome grant um, before applying, and it's a large dollar figure, so we wanted to try it. Right. Sam, um, what funds have been, ex I'm looking at a spreadsheet uh, that's over several years, what funds have been expended to date and by which sources? So you're looking at the spreadsheet that I sent. Mm -hmm. um, so the grant funds that have been specifically off, uh, granted to the town um, for the work, the Moose Plate for 30000 and the Mitigation Enhancement for 26,000. Um, there are some other funds in there, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and CRC partnership funds. Those, basically they brought the, those two organizations, brought those to the table and just paid a contractor directly to do some work. So some of it was invasive, some was the wetland delineation, um, those different things. So have we expended, Moose Plate looks like it's 30,000. Yeah. Have we expanded that? We have expanded a chunk of it. Um, I actually was just this week trying to get our, our tree planting contractor to invoice up, invoice so that um, we can know exactly how much we have left. Um, we do have some left, uh, and if we have, I believe, through 20, 2026 to spend it. Um, is it contingent on us completing tasks that were in the ARM application? Like, is there any overlap so that we would uh, no, not, not be meeting Moose grant requirements if we walk away from ARM fund? No, not at all. Um, so the designer should have our design to me by the end of October. Um, and invasive treatment should be wrapped up next weekend. Tree planting is all done. We're gonna have a little bit of extra money afterwards that we might get some additional work done. So we've already hit all. We're we're gonna hit all the requirements for that grant. For the Moose grant. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's looking like we'll also be able to use mitigation enhancement fund to do a lot, some additional work in conjunction with the Moose plan. Moose grant. But that's fifteen thousand. Is that correct? Uh, mitigation enhancement fund is twenty six thousand. 26,000, I don't see that on here, okay. Oh, I see, 26,000 over three years. Yeah. So this year it's 15,000, have we expended that? So that, so that was a budget estimate. We haven't expended okay. anything from the mitigation enhancement fund. Okay, so I guess I want to say again, are we at any risk with other funders if we walk away from the ARM grant? We haven't put any requirements from the other funders so there are no requirements getting covered by the ARM grant that are going towards the other funders. And what is the, um, where does the school district and the elementary school land on this, recognizing, you know, that their approval and um, what they won't be getting if, if we don't accept this funding and move forward? Well, I was trying to finalize things within the town before. Okay. Somebody's got to go first. Um, okay. Again, the main requirements mm -hmm. from the, like, the, the main thing that the ARM fund would require that it would not get done with the other parts of this is the permanent legal protection, and the school, kind of from the start, didn't particularly want to do that. They, they agreed to, in order to get the funds to do the project, mm -hmm. the, uh, the restoration work. So. My, my understanding is they're going to say, well, great. Yeah, the restoration, there's contingency, I'm trying to look, okay. The architectural resource plan is $70,000. Yeah, that's and, the, I, I, that one we didn't have any good budget estimate for, and I got a quote, $5,000 for the initial review, and right. it's not guaranteed that that would require phase 1B, but... Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Most people said, yeah, you're on a floodplain on a river bend, you're probably gonna be going to phase 1B. 
Um, you know, quotes vary, but I was trying to be conservative there. Mm -hmm. and, and I did get a $65,000 quote for that. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying to look at these larger items that we weren't aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Wetland restoration, most, mostly it's rest, the restoration. Yeah, and, and so that, the wetland restoration was what it really was supposed to come Was to be the meat of the project. Right. right. And we did actually, in kind of our conversations, we adjusted that design a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, because actually, originally, they also wanted us to put in monitoring wells for, to show the hydrology change, mm -hmm. um, which would have been like 20000 a well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we adjusted to not be restoring, like saying, not claiming that we're going to restore the hydrology so we can put the wells in. And it would reduce the cost. So we, we've kind of tried really hard with, and, and that's kind of how that budget has been <coughs> fine-tuned, um, with, with the DES and our engineer, who's actually put in a lot of pro bono work to do it, um, and myself trying to find a way to fund everything and not um, turn down the grant. And it, part of the conclusion here is that it not going to be able to be done. So we can't find what we want to do. We don't. We're not on the hook for it. Um, so still, the yeah. and the, I'm taking it from your comments that the school district would not be interested in funding any of this on their own. No. Shocker. But <laughs> <laughs> when does this? I, have I guess to be one other thing I want to say is in terms of you know them. Them never wanting to give us funding again. Um, I do hear your concern. I don't. I don't share it. Um, partially because we've never actually, you know, I know I, I came and I got the approval to sign the grant basically, um, but we never have had a grant contract. Um, the entire process has been you have this offer contingent on us figuring out these other details, and we never could come to agreement on the details. Um, I think part of it may actually be I didn't really know our process, so I may have jumped the gun in coming and getting your approval first to sign the front contract when we didn't have one. When do they need an answer by? Uh, I mean, I'm sure sooner than later, and you would love to be done, but to really well, think no, this through. No, there, we don't have a hard deadline um, because we don't have any contract. I, I mean, if we just never, if we don't do anything, then they're just going to assume that we aren't taking it. Um, and what do they give? Later, what do they give for reason on the requirements that weren't established up front, or that we weren't aware of up front? My take on it is that, so the, the DES staff who is administering the program has been really upfront in that she is new um, to the program. Um, and my take is that these are requirements passed on by the Army Corps that I think she may, she may have, or maybe, maybe she like, Maybe I interpreted her what she was saying incorrectly, but just kind of assumed there was more flexibility than there might have been. Um, and and like archaeological review, I didn't really didn't come up until after the application. Um, yeah, so so there's a number of things going in there, but but the biggest thing I think is kind of unfamiliar familiarity. Both for her and also like, you know, they really bury stuff in, in applications sometimes, but, um, and then like, the process is like, we get the arm grant and then we apply to the, to Army Corps, us and DES apply to Army Corps for their funding. And so that's kind of where those requirements, I think, came out, is when we went to look at that second. Oh, okay, you bring up an interesting point. So. Yeah. <laughs> So then, as as a as a partnership, if we if we stuck with this, the town would be in partnership with DES to go to Army Corps for would it be for the hundred and seventy one thousand? Like how much would that be? It would be the, for the hundred and thirty seven. 
the oh, for the number. initial 137. Yeah. Not the added added costs that you just learned about. Right. Got it. The. Uh, okay. I hate to turn down money, but it really <laughs> appears on this. This is There's an effort to get us to do something, give us money for the initial cost, but we're the town is stuck with the cost of the project. I mean, to break it down plain and simple, the town's going to pay the cost of the yeah. project. It, there's a no-win situation. The, uh, so, so being a contractor that does this type of work, I, I feel for you. I know what you're going through. Uh, the only thing I can say is moving forward on another project is get an engineering firm that has done these, that has worked with DES in the Army Corps, that knows the pitfalls. Um, anybody on the Connecticut River that's working on the Connecticut River, automatically you, you get an archaeological requirement. Yeah. It's, it's known. It's just the way it is. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, we didn't get all that together and see if it was even feasible to do it, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, I, well, I'll say the <clears> thing <throat> is, is we are going to have a final design that really clearly lays out the requirements. Yep. Um, you know, part of it was also jumping the gun with the preliminary design and going all the way to implementation. Yep. Um, so we are going to end up with a design through the Moose plan. Not right. Plan, but, but maybe down the road yeah. can apply again take the knowledge that you've learned, weave your way through, yeah. maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I don't see any way to I tell. would not entertain there. a motion at this point. What does that motion need to, like, say? <laughs> that we will not accept the grant. We don't have a grant agreement to accept. Is that we correct? We right. don't have a grant agreement. I mean... So I would love, so a, what is I would that love a motion that I could pass along to the person at DS and, and say. I mean, yeah. we did take a vote right, to, to accept. To accept. So, so I we, think we should either a motion to not accept or rescind, rescind the acceptance. Rescind. Do we know when we took that? Does yeah. that need to be posted as its own? I think oh. it's the cleanest thing that we're going to rescind our approval of accepting. Are you, say, are you asking if it needs to be a public hearing to rescind? Right. I think it's what that's, he's asking. Because it would have been a public hearing wrong. to accept. Oh, did we, we did open that in a public session, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. But we could put it on the next agenda and we'd know the date that we, that we uh, just, accepted it. I don't, know, I don't remember quite. Hate to keep it. I know we have to have a public hearing to accept monies. I'm not mm -hmm. sure we have to have a public hearing to reject them. <laughs> The, uh, and especially when it's a thing that is really not going to accomplish what we set out to accomplish. Yeah. But he's also not in a hurry, so we could do it that way. Yeah, we, would we would know we were safe. Yeah. A month, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We know uh, we were so safe. Everyone comfortable putting it on the next agenda? Yep, and, let's do that. Uh, I know you're not busy or anything, Jessica, but if you could research whether we actually have to do a public hearing or not. <laughs> you don't make eye contact with her like when you ask these questions you anymore. Do. I know. And okay. Sam, I think it's great you've been active, and I encourage you to continue the activism. This one didn't work out, but please continue to look for the grants and stuff. And again, We've all learned something here with this one. So thank you for your continued work. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see uh, some more moose plate funding coming at some point. So. Yep. Okay. Good. So we're going to still get the, get the work done, just not with this grant. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Don't get discouraged. And Would we... Would you like me to join for two weeks from now for the public hearing? Is, uh, are we going to schedule it for two weeks? Or whenever it is. Yeah, two weeks, please. Yes. And we'll move on to Thanks, review of minutes. Do you want a little Lucy? Or? That'll be, we'll put it at the, at end. the end. Okay. Okay, uh, minutes. Review so of the minutes from September 3rd, 2024, work session and regular non public. Uh, I make a motion to accept the work session. Uh, I've I'll got a motion. I'll second. 
And I've got a second to accept the minutes from the work session of September 3rd, 2024. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Regular session? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for the regular selecting session. I'll second. Got a motion and a second to accept the minutes from the regular session of September 3rd, 2024. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And then entertain a motion to accept the non-public minutes. I'll, I'll make that motion as well. I'll second. A motion and a second to accept the non-public minutes from September 3rd, 2024. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, we'll move on. Various paperwork. That needs to be signed. Coming to you is the um, Anything else for? That's it. Okay, uh, we'll move on. New business, uh, discussion of underground storage tanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The town's meter route reported a malfunctioning sensor which required a minor service call from Tanner Hill Milling and Construction. So Dave Landry from Tanner Hill advised placing jersey barriers in front of one side of the highway tanks as well as building a berm out of coal patch to divert water away from the tank. The tanks are being inspected monthly by town staff, but we've received communication from the state regarding deficiencies as recently as February 14th of this year. Mr. Landry proposed, provided the town manager a contact to reach out to at Stone Cipher and Clark Environmental Solutions to ask questions about tank removal funding. The town manager spoke to Jennifer Stone Cipher, who explained that the state of New Hampshire received settlement funds to um, resolve litigation related to MTBE contamination but it's important that we apply for these settlement dollars um, to have these funds earmarked for us before they run out. So I reached, um, so I will be filling out an MTBE settlement fund assistance application to start this process. Completing this application does not bind the town, but it does determine whether this project will be eligible for this type of funding. So there's no um, action needed from you. It was informational for this evening. Thank you. And then welfare guidelines. So the town has a duty to up, have updated welfare guidelines to help uh, guide the welfare director, which happens to be a team. <laughs> um, please see chapter two from the Art of Welfare Administration, the 2024 edition and the supplemental packet. Uh, the town manager cannot find recently adopted guidelines, and if the municipality does not have updated guidelines, RSA 165 could be violated. The guidelines speak about the application process, the necessary documents, and provides an eligibility formula. So it tells people how they can apply, what they need to apply, how the decision will be made in order to have everything else. So, um, there are acceptable allowances that are pulled from SNAP monthly, maximum monthly allotments, and from HUD fair market rent standards for Coas counties. So this gives me a formula to take specific dollars into play when determining eligibility. Um, the town of Lancaster also previously had a work program, um, 
So there are conditions of employment which were initially drafted by former town manager McGee, and they are also included in, in the supplemental information. But we do not we do not need official adoption by the select board for the work program. However, I am looking to you um, to adopt the guidelines for the 2024 rates, and then we should revisit these rates. Here. I'll make a motion to adopt the 2024 guidelines with rates and to revisit annually as presented. I'll second it. Got a motion and a second to accept the 2024 guidelines for town welfare and to revisit on an annual basis. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. The ayes have it, I guess. Oh, I, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 me, I. The, uh, and I encourage the sorry. work program. It was used pretty successfully many years ago. And hopefully it can be used again successfully. And then purchasing and procurement, procurement policy revision. Mr. Chair, at the last meeting, we spoke about the purchasing procurement policy and the need to have um, an emergency or an exigent policy um, in the event of extreme cases. Um, there was also a minor typo that was corrected, and we further defined um, businesses located within the Lancaster area as within 50 miles of Lancaster. So that's what's presented to you this evening. Now, is that going to be officially accepted, or...? Do we have to vote on it? Yes. Yes. Okay. I do have one question. Um, in the past, did the select board have like a policy or maybe a practice, I, I don't know, about trying to purchase even more locally than 50 miles when able? And is the 50 miles being put in for services such as engineering or things that we can't get closer to home? I say. I think we did give a preference, preference to, to local businesses. In town businesses. Yeah. Uh, I think the idea of the 50 mile radius is for something that might not be readily available in the local area mm -hmm. because there's certain items that you're going to have to go outside mm -hmm. that area. So, especially in an extreme emergency. Mm -hmm. Can I make a comment on that? Yep. Uh, when Gene Spado was the select man, uh, the territory was buying home off from somebody in Whitefield. And they made a vote. Mike brought it up. And he said, we'll buy a home in Lancaster. There are several people who sell home. Yep. And, and that was the policy in his era. Of we will do business in town if we can. And, and not understandably, if nobody can sell, sell us a home, you got to go to Whitefield. Mm -hmm. But now I'll give you an example of the police chief, when it's burning underwater, I had somebody from Groveton come down and work on Burma. We've got several Burma people here in town and they have taxpayers. And I think that should be taken into consideration. It's the same as it was back in those days. Sure. It, it is taken into consideration. Though. We well, still I, apparently it wasn't that case. He hired somebody from we still, Actually, he hired somebody that could come down and look at it as soon as possible. Well, the, um, we fish the old one looked at it as soon as possible? I'm not exactly sure. But he had assured me that he called around. Where they asked? That's the question. Which 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 you asked it down look at? You know, we go we go over this time and time again. There was an emergency situation that needed to be looked at. From what my understanding is, he got somebody that could come down and look at it the soonest. Well, would would the select board give him some direction and the rest of it's about to get some direction to do business locally if they can? The Direction's already there, Alan. The direction is there to use local businesses. And I appreciate that. I, I want them to use local businesses, but there's been other times we've used local businesses, Alan, that you screamed that they weren't the lowest cost. So I, I don't know. You, you sit on one side of this issue, and then when we use the local thing and we spend more money than we could have outside, you yell at us because we didn't go with the lowest possible price. Right. Yes, you have, Alan. You've there done is, it. There's a law. There's a law right there that says you will use if you do a competitive bidding. You will use the lowest bidder if the 
products are equal and the services are equal. There's a law right there. We own it. Alan, you lawyer. interpret stuff a lot different than what any lawyer does. And I'm sorry to have this discussion, but yes, you sat on both sides of it. I sat here on the board and you screamed that we didn't buy a truck from North Country Ford because it was several thousand dollars cheaper in Berlin. And you said you should have bought it from North Country Ford. The next time the truck at North Country Ford was $1,500 more than the one at Berlin City Ford, and you chastised this board for buying the one at North Country Ford. That has been your history. So, yes it has. No, you are. So, again, Alan, you sit there and you criticize this board no matter which way we make a decision. Yes, you do. So, plain and simple, now it's not constructive, you're done. You're done. Did you second the motion? I'll second that motion. Okay. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Move on to other business. Anything for other? Nothing for other. Old business, solar net metering update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the town manager spoke with Northern New Hampshire Community Relations Representative from Eversource who provided her a contact at their business customer service center, so I placed a phone call. And per Eversource, the town of Lancaster executed an agreement in 2016 at the Lagoons for the solar panels that selected a net metering tariff. <coughs> at that time, there may have only been one tariff available. In 2016, the town authorized net metering checks to be submitted for an annual cash out if production exceeded 600 kilowatt hours as of the March statement. So if we exceed that 600 kilowatt in production, we get a check. At this time, the town is unable to shift the excess solar production to cover the other town accounts due to this initial selected option in the 2016 contract. However, if the town receives an option to change the tariff, it will be brought to your attention. Okay. So that's a long, that's, that's it's a long term. Long term. Yes. Okay. But moving forward, who knows if they will provide us other options. So if we put in another array. If we get a new array, let's see what those options look like if that happens. And we can do that before we decide to put an array in? Will we know that information? I, think, I imagine we could find out from that yep. source. We'd have to ask them. Yeah. I, I don't think the new funded. array would be covered under the old agreement. No, so. that's what I was. Correct. So but, that but, one might be. But we would know be before. Easier. I would hope that we would know before we built one what direction right. we could yeah. funnel the money. I can say when that was built down there, that was we were, I think, the first town in New Hampshire to build mm -hmm. a solar array. So there wasn't wow. yeah. any okay. guidelines to go by. So, okay. yes, Luke. Are you guys thinking about another array? We have been talking about adding huh? to the array, yes. Uh, just to add to the energy produced in general for the town, would it be, can you tell me just a little bit more? Uh, it's really in the beginning stages of just looking at the feasibility. Mm -hmm. It'd be in the same location, more or less? Yes. Huh? Believe so. Anything else on that? No. See none. Uh, Storm update. Storm update, our favorite standing old business. So Robin and I attended an exploratory, uh, exploratory call with representatives from Homeland Security and Emergency Management in FEMA Region 1 on September 5th to review our impact survey. So we have to submit the survey. It's, it's many steps. After this exploratory call, we're completing a number of items in conjunction with each other starting tomorrow. So we're starting three distinct functions that they would typically do separately, and we are doing them all this week. One is a recovery scoping meeting. It's tomorrow. It's a uh, substantive meeting of grant delivery processes that should be conducted within 21 days of this applicant assignment after we have this initial phone call. It will, our situation will be discussed in detail. We'll include additional in, incident related damages like we found a uh, community camp and any emergency activities performed, any cost, and what we've been doing to fix our roads. We're also going to provide them a damage inventory, so that's like going to be a spreadsheet of what's what's been um, what damage has um, uh, occurred, as well as GPS coordinates, pictures, those types of things. And then we'll also be hitting the roads to do a site inspection with these folks to 
measure, you know, further measure um, anything that's existing, knowing that we we're looking pretty good, but we're definitely not 100% out there. Um, the road crews are very busy. Um, highway after after Labor Day weekend, shoring up Buffalo Road. Um, lots of ditching to do. Lots of um, getting things up as best as we can prior to um, the snowfall. So that's kind of our storm update for this point. We did have uh, two bids that were posted to the website. We did not receive anything. Um, as far as the water transmission line and the water intake work. Um, so we're just hitting pause on that work until I talk with FEMA tomorrow on, on site to understand um, uh, funding for these projects and timelines. The people that are coming up and doing the measuring, are they the same people that came before, like doing a second measure, or completely new to Lancaster? Situation. Some of them, so it's, and thank you for mentioning that. So um, during this initial meeting, um, I asked, well, what happened to all of these measurements that you, you spent with us, with Shane and others, and they were very hesitant to provide that, then they provided what they have. So we have a pretty good idea of the measurements that they have, but there was non-surveyed areas with, that we didn't hit with them, Wesson Road, Arthur, White, and if you can't, those types of areas. So they really hit like the 10 worst roads yes. or something, right? Not all of the damage. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. Sure. Thank you. And select board members reports. I have nothing. I have a short report. Um, at the um, last work session, I'd mentioned that I thought we were increasing the land use permits for the beginning of 2025. I thought that we had made a step increase decision. Mm -hmm. And I looked it up, and yes, November 6, 2023 meeting, we had made the decision to go to $45 at the beginning of 2024 and $75 at the beginning of 2025. So okay. I just want to make sure that was <coughs> confirmed, and it has been. That's my only report tonight. Okay. I have a short one. Um, there's been recent post on Facebook that the members of the town or residents of the town would have realized savings if they had gone with the community energy program at town meeting. That is not true. The community energy program concerned only the electric rates. That's for per kilowatt hour. The increase that is coming down the road is for transmission. There's three separate charges. So there would have been no savings to any town resident by going to the community power program on this price increase. And I only bring it up is because I don't want that misinformation out there. And that's all I have. I would add to that, Leon. The, uh, most of the people out there don't understand that they are free right now to go to CM Brown for their electricity. They're free to go to Joe Blow for their electricity. Anyone. My neighbor is in a, uh, gets their electricity from the uh, outfit in Texas. So this is nothing new, and, and it should be, people should be educated that community power is not a new concept. Uh, it's just a grab from like some people who want to control it, and uh, they're going to profit uh, from it in Texas. Well, you're 100% correct. Anyone can switch their power supplier at any time. And this board, as a board, told the committee that the people of town did not understand the program well enough to bring it to town meeting. There was a member of the committee that insisted that we bring it to town meeting. They were told, you need to explain this because nobody here on this board, and I'm not trying to speak for the other two, they can say, nobody here on this board is comfortable bringing this to town meeting this year. We think you should wait until next year. But there was an insistence that it be put on the warrant. So we put it on the warrant and told them, you need to explain this to the townspeople so they will pass it if that's what you want. It was overwhelmingly defeated because people did not understand it, didn't comprehend it, 
did not believe it was enough savings, which I agree with. The minuscule savings was not worth the work it was going to put the town through. That's my opinion. The other two have their own, or might be the same. I believe the townspeople made the right decision. That's there. But I just want that disinformation rebutted in a public forum. Thank you. And now we'll move on to town manager's report. All righty. So I sent along letters to the commercial backflow preventer owners on September 9th, letting them know that New England Backflow will be reaching out to them to schedule testing. And testing is anticipated to be conducted on October 17th and 18th. We sent three bid notices out for waste disposal hauling. Bids are due by 4 p.m. on November 22nd. Um, I've had one welfare case in the past couple of weeks. Um, we will be reporting out, uh, there's a conversation about public smoking at the last session, and we'll be reporting out that information so I can get a little bit more info um, at next meeting. We were, um, I met with the school board chair, and they had a school funding program this evening, which we were invited to, will be subject to fines. Um, the school board meetings rotate throughout the school facilities, and the first school board meeting in October, on October 10th specifically, will be at Lancaster Elementary School. Uh, the homecoming parade is at 6 p.m. this Thursday, uh, the 19th, from elementary school, school to Canal Street. Um, a North Country Outdoor Industry Career Expo will be held at the Lancaster Fairgrounds tomorrow, and the fire department and police department will have representation at the fair. That's um, for students to provide them opportunities to engage with um, potential um, careers. I spent time this week uh, with um, uh, a few department heads touring community camp, A, to um, understand the damage that we received there to a bridge, um, and then just to understand um, the facility. I hadn't walked the trail before. Um, and I know that there was, you know, we have this hall that's out there, and um, Chair just mentioned that there may have been previous conversations, so I want to look through the minutes to see if there was anything ever formally discussed regarding the hall, um, but I think it deserves some attention. We can't just let it sit there. Um, uh, so that's an ongoing conversation. Chatting with Eli about um, getting quotes for their roofs so that we understand during this budgeting process. Um, they're having um, soccer tournaments and basketballs coming for us, Fast and Furious. Um, mentioned that they'll likely be um, selling merchandise, so on and so forth at these festivals, so some additional revenue, and likely opening the snack shack, but just when there's um, Volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. Lots of when Will that be you, Jessica? When there's the audience that's available to purchase things. I love a good concession. Stand. I know, you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when it's baseball season, sign me up. Um, I reached out to the previous warrant article petitioners to advise them of the process and deadlines for the 2025. We think it's very far out there, but I'm new in the seat. I wanted to make sure that we communicated everything out, so sent along letters. Um, for visibility, warrant article submissions, including any required signatures, must be submitted here by February 4th to make it to town meeting. Um, then we received word from the New Hampshire Department of Energy. They are reviewing our municipal solar grant application at the lagoons. They noted that our application carved out $99.25 for permitting, which was not a covered expense, so, so it would be deducted from the total grant amount requested bringing the requested grant down to $129,018. In speaking with Melissa Elander, she's a consultant, she explained that if and when the grant is awarded, Eversource determines the interconnection amount. So while we've quoted this $99.25, she's seen ranges anywhere from $4,000 to $10,000 um, based on fixed and variable costs associated with where the panels are installed. So what does this mean? We may need to come up with anywhere between four and $10,000 that are not covered with this grant. Um, then we have Roxanne Ball. Um, she's fantastic. She's down in uh, town clerk's office. She'll be retiring and she'll be moving down to South Carolina to be closer to family or South Carolina area. Um, we want to thank her for her service and I'll certainly miss her. It's been great knowing her for the past couple of months. Um, so that's it for my seat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then there's information included in our packets. There's a commercial fireworks application for 198 Pleasant Valley Road. 
Land use permits for Betty Brown off Page Hill Road, Gilbert and Nancy DeRosier on 225 Elm Street, Patricia Steady, 35 Winter Street, and John and Deborah Curtis of 16 Sunnyview Drive. Is there any questions from the board on those? No. With that, we'll move into public comments, but we will have Lucy speak first. She was scheduled earlier for trees, but missed yeah, the appointment. Sorry, I had another, I had another conflict. Anyway, I'd just like to say that I think the town crew has done a great job during this fallout from the town and state crew from the flood. And also, I'd like to put in a word for Adam Medina. I know that there's Al has left. It's great to see the article in the paper about him. And um, I think Abby has just done a terrific job. So I don't know how that's all going to shake out. But I would, you know, I go by there all the time. I live in that quarter of town. And he's pleasant. He's hardworking. And I think he deserves the position if it comes up for that for, in any kind of competitive uh, format. So, but I'm, I'm here tonight to talk about trees and the Dow Fund, and all the attendant stuff that's going on. So I probably flatter myself to think that I helped, I pushed Trish Gaynor to do some research on it and kind of finally come up with some figures. And, and she talked to the Attorney General's office, as I did as well. And I finally, this is probably old hat for you guys, but I finally understood the way that the Dow Fund was set up, which was it flips every three years, and if it's not dedicated to tr trees, and I think mostly trees, more than beautification, it can go to charity. And so, and and so then it starts again. It starts over again. And so we are now, as I understand it, at 2024 is the third year of the current three-year cycle. I talked to Trish today just to get my numbers right, and she said that that the previous three-year cycle was about to be dedicated to charity, and it was about it's about two thousand dollars, as I understand it. And then we talked about the current cycle, which is, she said, by the end of 2024, will probably be about two thousand dollars as well. And she said that have been dedicated to trees. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I haven't heard anything about that. And my goal coming here tonight was to ask you to dedicate it to the trees in town. And apparently this has all been going on without anybody talking to me about it. And I, I just feel a little bit frustrated that all these years I've been trying to, you know, bring more interest and whatever into the about trees in town and now this is all that's already going on without my knowledge. So I'm glad that this money is going towards trees. But I wish that I think you all know, Peter knows, everybody knows that this is something I'm passionate about. Your quote, passion. And uh, but nobody has told me this. So the only reason I know this is because I call, I talked to Trisha today and she said that this money is dedicated to trees. So anyway, um, I would like to be included in this conversation, and uh, I think that it's appropriate. Peter is now an employee of the town, and I think it's appropriate to include some of the public in this conversation. And um, so I don't know where that leaves us all, but um, I've been doing research on trees. I've talked to um, the nursery in Concord who, from whom Whitefield bought those maple trees for King Square, which are doing very well. From, as soon as they planted them, they seem to, but you know, there are, anyway, I'd be glad to go into detail about this, but not here and not now, but with whoever is talking about this. And I, I went to the Conservation Commission and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll support you bring us a plan. And so I haven't quite done that because I felt that I needed to talk to you guys first. And, but I have given some thought to it. And 
part, like, uh, obviously part of the plan is to figure out where in town I think, or we think, ultimately, trees are needed. And also, I feel part of the plan should be to put more information out to the citizen Lancaster about the benefits of trees, because somehow they don't seem to put a lot of priority on it. And I, I noticed that St. Johnsbury is putting trees in their playground, and other towns, and there are all kinds of associations and, that are you know, pushing for trees. I was talking to my friend Peter Hogue, who's an arborist in Tamworth, and who, when I was on the cemetery committee, he went through all the trees on Wilder Cemetery, and you know, he helped us figure out what to do with those, how to thin them, and so on and so forth. And he said, you know, our mandate is to, as arborists is to keep trees going, keep them alive if we can, and prosper. And, uh, but more often than not, people want to cut them down. And that whole conversation ensued into other things, one of which was I'm concerned about the cemetery where I live. There's beautiful big white pines there. And I'm just afraid they're going to be the next to go. All the hardwoods up in the far corner have been taken out. So I know I'm just kind of you know rambling around here, but I guess you know Peter. Peter's point was if you take care of these trees and you trim the branches, they won't fall off and they won't be a threat to anybody, and the trees will prosper. So I, I, so I, I think the town needs an arborist ultimately, and I would love to see the town dedicate. And some annual money to having an arborist, not a utility arborist, a certified arborist from the state of Hampshire, to come in and either ten hands-on work on the trees, or work with the town crew on the trees, or advise the town crew, or some format. I think, you know. Anyway, so. But I'd like to be included in the conversation, and I have ideas, obviously, and I have concerns. But ultimately, um, I'd just like to be included in the conversation, and I, it doesn't seem that I am. And I, I, it's very frustrating to me, given all the years that I have been sounding off about trees. So, I, I guess that's see no problem with you being oh, included in one the conversation. Thing. I'm sorry, I just wanted to tell you that I've been talking to my Ar Arborist friends and others about transplanting that spruce, which you expressed to me you're having trouble figuring out a way to do. And I don't, if you can get somebody with a big excavator and, and, they, and somebody who knows how to create the root ball, you can just lay it on a low bed and bring it into town. It doesn't seem like it should be that. There are plenty of people with low beds and there are people with excavators. So I, I think it can be done. I think it can be done locally. You know, years ago we had this horse built by Martin McGowan. It was, a, uh, it was over in Lindenville, and it was 13 feet on a trailer. And we had to move it, and we just, you know, and we had the people to do it. And it was, oh, yeah, we'll do it. You fit, never mind, I'm not gonna go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so it can be done. I think it can be done locally. Hi. Yep. The um, and like I said, as far as being included, I have no issue with you being included on it. Uh, we have employed an arborist who's given his recommendations. That's independent of any utility. And Is that Joshua Mark? Correct. Mm -hmm. So and we take serious and. You're not the only one who likes trees. Like I said, there is certain trees that I would like to see be replaced in Centennial Park where they like tree because they do make the park, in my opinion, beautiful. But we also have to look out for liability and hazards of the town. When's the last time somebody's hurt by a tree in this town? But do we want to wait till somebody is? Yeah. Um, the trees. People drive their kids everywhere, every which way in their cars. It's so dangerous, and everybody but worries about trees. So, Lucy, I, that answer yes. just is not acceptable to anyone in the municipal world. If we wait until somebody's hurt, then you know what kind of a liability and a price tag the town would pay 
for that. And in the meantime, the climate is going to, you know, whatever, because we're... Um, look, no, we're not going to debate we're climate change. We're talking about trees within Lancaster. So this, this... We know we have, no, we know we have issues with trees that are near their end life. We have delayed taking some of those trees down. And I'm going to tell you, my personal opinion is, when they told us the tree has four to five years, we probably should have removed it, ground the stump, got a new tree and planted it. Because in five years, we're going to have a tree that looks decent. If we wait till that one dies, and then we try to plant this one beside it, it's not going to be optimum. That is my opinion. I have no problem including you because I do know you're passionate about it. And I do knew, know that you put hard work into a lot of things. It's just a disagreement on timing, in my opinion. But well, yeah. I, I think like Jessica to say has something to say. Experience, we've taken down a lot more trees than we've tried to save. And that's an issue I have. I think that I. I honestly believe a lot of the trees we've taken out were not in the last years of their life. They just needed to be trimmed and treated well or, or, or healed and kept going. And I, I don't have a sense that this community or even this board supports that. It's always like, take it down. If it's a problem, take it down. Instead of saying, let's cable it, let's treat it, let's trim it, let's fertilize it, let's you know, there are so many things that can be do, done to keep these wonderful old trees going, but I never see that happening. They go down. But you asked us to employ an arborist, and when we do, and you don't like his opinion... I think you leave, you though. Like I think that the select no, board working with I the think arborist, Jessica wanted to yeah. speak, so... Yeah, so I just wanted to um, refer back to the August 19th, 2024 meeting, because I know that we provided a DAP on an update of including pricing and species varieties. So if you haven't, if you haven't you know, watched the recording, you'll have a full update from that. With the funds that are available, I think it was anticipated roughly three trees um, with the remaining dollars, um, and again, in a number of different varieties and sizes for us. Given that our highway crew is tapped this fall, I was proposing to the select board that we purchase these trees, go grab them in the spring or have them delivered in the spring so they can be placed in the ground when we have more capacity. At this point in time, I have reached out to Rebarb Tree, uh, uh, yep, yeah, tree, tree service. for um, a quote of the pruning and the maintenance of the tree so we understand it for next year's budget. Um, I'm very mindful of how much we're expending and you know the future state of the decisions that we make. I hear your comments regarding um, you know, public outreach and if you would like something placed um, you know, in, in a resident notice or so on and so forth, or if you find a, a piece of collateral on another state agency's website, those types of things, that's very easy for me to share. But at this point in time, I do not have the capacity to craft something bespoke. Anything else from the public? I think it's pretty ridiculous they have to have an opera telling you it's okay to try to get them out of a tree. I, I think you're, we're getting ridiculous here. Um, we don't need an opera to cut a dead limb out of a tree. I'm sorry. Any old farmer would know that. And, 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 and we shouldn't be cowdowing to people asking for an opera to do such things. An opera is just for, for specific information on maybe on a, a disease tree or, 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 like you say, the end of life of a tree. But, Tie the hands of the town crew or anybody, Peter or anybody else, from cutting a dead limb out of a tree is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, thank you. My, my the, uh, we're not going to yeah. get into a debate back and forth on, on that. He has his opinion. You have yours. I have mine. The board does. I thank you for coming and expressing yourselves and giving your opinions. Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And we are adjourned.